Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye behind. I have a dye pot here that has a lot of acid. There was a little bit of remnant green. That's a tiny bit of some true black with gorgum. I'm gonna pop on my gloves. <laughs> I am going to pop on my gloves. We're gonna add some remnants of some royal purple, but I think that this is all the pinks that were in there because this isn't looking very royal purple to me right now. We have some remnant emerald green. We've got a remnant mixture that has a little bit of the purple, a little bit of the green, and some blazing orange from when I did, from when I originally mixed colors for the triad color mixing exercise. And then finally, I have a lot of blazing orange. Uh, the orange is gonna be the dominant color in here right now. The dye bath is still a little bit warm, so it's not melting the cup, but it's not that hot. Uh, a lot of the other colors were just remnants in a cup. The blazing orange, there was a lot more and I just diluted it. But blazing orange overall is less pigmented than those other colors. Now I am curious what color we've got here. It's sort of a burnt orange color is what we have, but I kind of want to dip dye into this mess uh, because, you know, there's some colors that will strike fast. I know the purples strike a little bit fast. The greens strike a little bit slower. I got beautiful breaking with those two colors uh, in another video. And so I thought that we would dip dye, but we'll dip dye some dry yarn. Uh, we'll heat it up a little bit and then we'll start. Um, we're going to be dyeing some Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight yarn today. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. I don't know what the little film is on here. Maybe that's related to the royal purple. Oh, must be. It's like a, I'm regretting putting that in the, in the pot. <laughs> It wasn't like a growth or anything because these weren't that old of dye stocks, but that may end up giving us some uh, pinky splotches on our otherwise, this is a really nice burnt orange color. Uh, this took a really bright orange and gave it like a bit of brick to it. Anytime you blend uh, colors that are like all of the, oh, I don't know color theory guys. But since we have so many different combinations of primary colors, we have made this orange a more muddy version of itself. There could be a more technical term. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's very, very pretty. I'm not necessarily seeing any color breaking. Color breaking is when you have a mixture like this that has so many pigments in it and they bind to yarn at different rates. And so sometimes what you might see is more red on one side, more blue on the other. Uh, it depends on the pigments that are in there. And I definitely saw a combination of the green and purple today break, but this is mostly orange and so it's not necessarily going to break and the acid concentration might be different. I mean, I feel like I see a hint of some greens down in here, but it's unclear to me if this is gonna feel, quote, broken or just feel like a beautiful dip dye, uh, because it does feel like a beautiful dip dye to me. Uh, so anyway, I guess now I'm gonna leave the yarn in here and we're gonna heat it for 30 minutes. And since I've been using the cover today, May as well cover it. It certainly doesn't hurt. I rarely cover my yarn. <laughs> but again, it, there's nothing wrong with covering it. It has been 30 minutes. And you know, I'm seeing some greens kind of come through for this lighter end. But oh, it's really pretty. It's different from a lot of the stuff I dye, but a very, very pretty color. All right, I'm gonna turn off the heat. There's a hint of color left in here, but I think I'm probably only gonna leave it in the pot a little while. I want to make space in my on deck for washing space. So until then, I'll leave it in here. But I anticipate when I remove it in a little while, 
that there'll be a similar amount of like that yellowish color left. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's wash our more burnt orange, brownish yarn here. I mean, I'm really happy to say that the orange is the star. And while I can't say for sure that there's breaking, it's possible that this has more blue in it and this is more just orange. The hard thing is that dilute orange leans yellow or gold. So sometimes with some colors, it's hard to say if you're seeing a separation of pigments or if what we're seeing here, which it really is likely this, that it's just, we're seeing the color more concentrated at one end and less concentrated at the other. But you know what? It's a beautiful colorway. Now, if you're wondering how something like this may knit up, if you're doing socks or something with this kind of dip-dyed colorway, you might see a spiraling kind of pooling pattern, um, the way the colors line up. Uh, but it is something that even though the transitions are, are soft in here, you may still get some pooling because the color transitions, the color sections are larger. So let's see if we are getting any color bleeding. I'm not seeing any, which is always wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish rinsing out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. So this is what the dye pot looks like after I removed it, just a tiny bit of yellow. This finished colorway is so pretty. We have, oh, what color would I call the lightest section? Um, it's a little bit, it's not as pink as like a peach, but that's sort of the direction that my mind wants to go. It's not the best description of the color. It's sort of a brownish yellow color, all the way to a more brick orange. Now, is this a mixture that broke into different hues, or are we seeing different depths of shade of whatever this leftover dye mixture was? And that is honestly hard to tell. It's hard to tell because a lighter version of this orange could be this. But at the same time, you could say, and I would believe you, that there's more reds down here than up there. So you could make a case either way. How would a colorway like this work up? Honestly, it depends on if you're knitting something flat or in the round, or honestly, if you're weaving, crocheting, or knitting, or whatever fiber craft you're doing. But if you're knitting and making socks, something like this will likely give you some micro striping. Uh, the colors, depending on how they pool, uh, you might see the lighter section sort of intermixed with the deeper one. And in some cases, it could pool in a way that might spiral around the sock. That could also be really fun. But again, this very much depends on your gauge, and you could get a lot of different types of patterns with a colorway like this. The day that I filmed this project, I had a lot of leftover dyes, more than enough to film multiple videos. In fact, I think I filmed four videos that day, all using the same combination of colors. But when it came to the leave no dye behind, when I wanted to use up all the dye that I had remaining, I'm really glad I split it into two different videos because I didn't want all the palettes of everything that I was creating to feel the same. And so we had one colorway that I used some of the more cooler colors and then I used some of the more warmer colors here so that way we have two things that feel completely different. When I'm filming this, I have no idea when these videos are going to come out, if this is gonna come out before some of the other videos or not. Sometimes I hold on to the Leave No Die Behind videos until there's a spot in the schedule where I think it'll fit nicely. And then even I forget <laughs> when I film them relative to one another. And so that can happen. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Please subscribe and do all the youtube -y things. This is the biggest way you can help support the content here. If you're looking for other ways, I do have an Etsy shop and a Patreon. I always have links to this down in the video description, and so it's worth going checking out to see where you can find me on social media and more. Thank you so much for watching.